sunlight exposure. In the southern hemisphere, if the plant is facing northwards, it'll get more sunlight and therefore more daylight time to grow, photosynthesize and germinate when it is the right time. Wind. Wind is essential for some plants as it carries seeds and helps with pollination. But if wind is too strong or constant, it can lead to stunted or disfigured growth. Rain. Water is essential for all life. Some plants, like moss, a bryophyte, require large amounts of water, while others, such as a cactus, which is an angiosperm, require small amounts of water. One thing is certain though, too little water will result in the death of a plant, and too much will drown it. Temperature. Sea plants are dependent on temperature for germination. Photosynthesis also increases as temperature increases. However, if temperature gets too high or too low, plants' natural nutrient cycles become out of balance, and at extreme temperatures, plants can die. The pH and chemical nature of soil. Most plants require slightly acidic soil. Soil pH is very important because it directly affects soil nutrient availability. Sexual reproduction is the fusion of two specialized sex cells called gametes from a male and female plant. This produces a diploid zygote. Sexual reproduction is more effective in a changing environment as the offspring will have a greater genetic diversity and will therefore be more resistant to a disease or climate change. But sexual reproduction takes longer periods of time. Asexual reduction only requires one parent, but this means that the offspring are genetic clones of the parent. Asexual reproduction in plants can occur in many forms, such as budding, vegetative propaganda, and fragmentation. A disadvantage of asexual reproduction is that these plants are extremely vulnerable in a changing environment to pathogens or climate change, though there is the advantage that it can be done in shorter periods of time. Bryophytes Bryophytes are non-vascular plants such as mosses and liverworts. They live in wet, moist conditions in shady areas and out of direct sunlight. They also are dependent on insects and wind to help spread their spores. They are the most primitive land plants and were the first to grow on land, although they remain highly dependent on water for reproduction. As bryophytes are non-vascular, they can grow in a wide range of habitats, such as a range of temperatures and on slopes and on rocks as they do not have roots. Bryophytes are dependent on water for reproduction as the male sperm cell must swim to the female eggs and this is when fertilization occurs. Asexual reproduction happens when a sporophyte releases spores and if a spore falls onto a damp area of ground, it may germinate. Sexual reproduction happens when the male reproductive structures become ripe. Then the male gametes are released. These sperm cells then swim through the water and are attracted chemically to the female reproductive structures where fertilization occurs to form a zygote. Pteridophytes are the second step in evolution. They live in moist and shady environments, usually in close proximity to water, as they are dependent on it to grow and for reproduction. Each pteridophyte has a different sorry pattern. Inside the sorry, there are spores. Wind is a very important factor for the dispersal of these spores. The pteridophyte goes under asexual reproduction, with these spores being released from the underside of a fern's leaf. These spores then grow into a prothallus and then into a developing sporophyte and finally it grows into a mature sporophyte. Gymnosperms Gymnosperms are seed-bearing vascular plants and the word gymnosperm means naked seed. The two biggest groups of gymnosperms are cycads and conifers. They live in direct sunlight and can live in dry conditions and on steep slopes. Most gymnosperms are evergreens. Cycads have a mutualistic symbiotic relationship with cyanobacteria. Cycads are typically found in harsh environments with little nitrogen. And so, the cycads provide a habitat for the cyanobacteria, and in return, the cycad is given the supplement of nitrogen. Some gymnosperm species, like conifers, have male and female cones on the same tree. This means they are monoecious. Others, like cycads, have separate male or female cone producing trees. In order for pollination to take place, gametes must come into contact with one another. This typically occurs via wind, animal, or insect transfer. And this means water is not needed for reproduction with gymnosperms. Angiosperms are flowering plants with vascular tissue, true roots and leaves, and use seeds for reproduction. They are also dependent on birds and insects for pollination. As the most recent group of plants in the plantae kingdom, they are not dependent on water for reproduction. Angiosperms can be mono- or dicotyledonous. Some types of angiosperms, such as hydrophytes, live in water, and others, such as saprophytes, live in dry conditions. The majority of angiosperms can live in direct sunlight away from water. 
Angiosperms have male sex organs called stamens. On the end of the stamen is the anther. This is where the pollen is made and the male gametes are housed. Pollen also allows for angiosperms reproduction to be independent from water. The pollen has to be taken to the pistil or the female part of the, of the flower. The pollen is left on the stigma at the end of the pistil. The stigma then carries the pollen down a tube called the style to the ovary. Once inside the ovary, the pollen and the ovule join in a process called fertilization. Two gametes then become a zygote. For angiosperms to reproduce, pollination must occur. This happens when insects or birds get nectar from a flower. As they do this, they pick up pollen. This pollen is then transferred from flower to flower. Wind can also help move pollen from one flower to another. The reason angiosperms have coloured flowers and distinctive scents is so that they can attract pollinators easier.